is do you have any stories of when your resilience has, was established from strength, tra uh, strength training and got you through a stressful time or situation? I'm going to take the second part of the question first. So the second part of the question is talking about like a stressful time that uh, that got me through, you know, using strength training. Right. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to rewind. So we, we brought up 2013. So 2013 was when I got back from Afghanistan. I was out there serving with the second uh, combat engineer battalion, the Marine Corps uh, out of Lejeune. And I was also serving with the 7th Rifles, uh, British Brigade Operations Company, and some of the SAS guys uh, from England, United Kingdom, whatever that whole island is called. Uh, when I got back, uh, I, I was having dehabilitating back pain. I had basically been carrying a rock, and I'm not exaggerating when I say I'm not I'm talking about 100 pounds a year. And we were doing dismount missions that would either last hours or days. And... Uh, when I got back, I was just in pain. I was trying to go to the clinic. Um, I affectionately call the, the medical group the medical hobby shop. Um, that is 100% because of my time in 2013, just trying to get help. And uh, I, I finally, uh, so we, you actually mentioned Alan Thrall, and it's really funny that you bring that up because watching YouTube, I saw Alan Thrall. And I was like, oh, that's cool. He's a former pallbearer. Uh, he's out doing content now. Um, I, I know fitness is important, but I never took it seriously. And a prime marine. Yeah, and a prime marine, yeah. Um, and so uh, I started kind of following his page, and then that ran into Never Sate, which is Brian Alzer's page, uh, which he is just wildly inspirational. He's a former, I think he's an agency guy or something. He's very hush-hush uh, about his past, but... Through those two gateways, as well as a really great physical therapist that I wish I remembered his name, big strapping dude for physical therapists, like not your traditional, like, let me shove a needle in you. Not that I hate that. I actually like the dry needling, but um, he was like, yeah, the reason you hurt is because you're weak. Uh, and I'm editing what he said here. So he's like, basically, you're weak. You're a whiner. Shut up. Uh, let's lift some weights. And so... Those three were kind of my trifecta that got me started actually doing strength training in a way that was productive in nature. Because before that, I'd do what I think a lot of military people do when they go to the gym. So one, we teach running because it's the easiest thing to get a thousand people to do at the same time. Uh, so I would go and I would run. I'd come back. I'd be sweating. I'd be like, all right, cool. So like that machine's open. I'll go do leg extensions. And then like that machine's open, I'll go do whatever, right? So you just basically wander around the gym doing the machine. Or when it's pizza on your own, everyone just goes, uh, we'll go do bench press. Yeah, bench press, yeah. yeah. I was actually, that's what I'm about to, to get to, or like the, the bench press, or like, uh, well, I'm going to do decline bench press today because, you know, I want to hit the lower pec versus the upper pec and like trying to get all like bro science scientific. And I took it seriously and I kind of simplified everything and I was like, all right, cool. So simple, hard, and effective. Um, let's make training that's simple, hard, and effective. And that's, that basically got me to where I was sitting on, I was laying down in our training room multiple times a day during shift. I had like five ice packs I'd bring to work. And the only way I could get through work was to go upstairs, lay down in the training room, lay on those ice packs for like 15 minutes. And then I was like numb enough to continue. The only other way outside of that. So like when I would go to training events, um, because there's a lot of pride in this too, right? Like I am, I'm a staff sergeant who is leading a section, supervising like five airmen at the time. And I'm not going to go on no profile because mama didn't raise no bitch. That was my attitude. And, uh, and so like I would go to training events and the only way I could get through some of those training events, cause I should have been on profile, like just straight up. Like I was not walking right as I would. And I don't think people like now it's different. Sorry to cut, but it's, there was a stigma back then. Oh yes. Right. Like hardcore. I still am guilty of that stigma with myself. Um, so like right now I'm actually at an AMRO process, potentially facing another med board. And uh, I probably should be on profile, uh, but I stepped up and took my, I was coming up due at the end of the month for my fitness test earlier this week, actually. And I, I came up to our PTL uh, the week before and I was like, hey, I need a PT test. So we did my FSQ and he's like, are you on profile? And in my head, I'm like, well, my elbow's screwed. My shoulder's still a little bit screwed. My back is absolutely screwed. No, nah, I'm fine. And uh, I ended up going out there and uh, just muscling through and take my PT. So not the right thing to do, but I'm guilty of this and I'm willing to admit it. But this is kind of a blind side for me is I, I refuse to be put on a physical limiting profile because I don't want to be that guy that's like, oh, he's one of those that's, you know, we came to 
became whatever grade and like suddenly he's just not going to do PT anymore. Like that is not my attitude. Well, anyways, I took my PT test in uh, 17 minutes, um, start to finish, uh, and got like a 93. So was this the hammer run? Yeah, yeah, I don't do that mile and a half crap. <laughs> the hand release push ups. No, no, I didn't do the hand release, just did the traditional. Okay, gotcha. It's easy to max at my age. Um, so yeah, that's so that's t- super long answer with tons of segues there. But the original question was, um, help me through a time. And I would say that learning how to strength train really did help me through a time. Uh, and it, it brought me to where I'm at today um, with the home gym scene, with my own physicality, with how I compete, with how I train people. Um, it was a lot of motivations there because, like you, you mentioned, like, uh, Pursuing, I'm pursuing my master's. I'm, I'm oh, pretty sorry. much there. I don't actually have my master's yet. I'm like one, I'm thinking I'm like two classes away from, from being complete. Uh, but that was a huge motivator for me because I had those people in my life that were like, hey, here's the hard truth. You're weak and you're weak-minded. Uh, start strength training and this is going to iron you out. And I was able to do that in a way that was constructive and it brought me to where I'm at where for seven years I had zero back pain at all. And I'll tell you that in 2013, they were saying I needed to have like three of my vertebrae fused. And I refused. I was like, absolutely not. I don't remember how old I was. I'm not going to do math in public. Yeah. But uh, I, I absolutely refused. I was like, no, no, you're not touching my back. Because I know that a back surgery now means another back surgery in 12, 20 years or something. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's that. Get started. Just basically helped me through. Got me upright. Got my mind right. Uh, and and kind of sharpened me for, for where I'm at today. Um the original part of that question was how important is our strength and uh, conditioning towards resilience? Because a lot of people, or like you said, and it ties into your answer, like they're, they have back pain and they, they want to get surgery. And it's just, to me, like there's so many different things. Strength training can help with depression. A Absolutely. Lot of people, I, there's something I feel like people are so depressed and I feel like a lot of personal problems could be resolved um, just by doing a set of squats. We have a victim culture that we live in these days. Uh, I'm not saying that everybody is a victim. I just want to make sure I, I say that clearly. I'm going, to, I'm going to say some things and I'm not shooting at anybody, but we have a very victim-friendly culture where it's like, hey, do you want to be hurt? Like going to medical and be like, oh, my back hurts. The first question they ask is like, oh, do you want to be on a profile? It's like, maybe that's not the right first question to ask. Um, yeah, so strength training can be that thing that helps you get better. The difference between, and, and again, it's, it's not necessarily that my style of strength training is for everybody. It might be that you just enjoy, enjoy carrying sandbags around, or you might just enjoy running. If running is your thing, that's great. Running is great. Like, there's a whole side of running that's incredibly beneficial, and it does help. And we're not just saying that it helps with things like, uh, we'll bring up like PTSD, depression, um, those kind of mental health issues. Um, it's not just saying it, it's in papers. Go on Medscape, go on and look at the studies that actually correlate those two things. And it's wild, the level that it's correlated. And again, it doesn't have to be that your goal is to lift a thousand pounds. That doesn't have to be that that's what your goal is. But the act of performing something that makes you better. Uh, in the Bible, it says that as iron sharpens iron, right? Um, iron sharpens iron is 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 wild because so many of us just want the band-aid, want the surgery to make the back pain go away. But that's not ironing, sharpening iron. That is flesh trying to sharpen iron, but really just getting cut as a result. You're just making something worse. You're not actually making yourself better. You have to do something that is going to improve where you're at. We have to disrupt homeostasis, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional. You have to disrupt that homeostasis, cause some damage in some ways, like the physical senses, you actually cause damage to your muscles. Um, and then get better as a result. Now, from the from the mental side, it might be recognized. So, like, one thing I know with me is that I tend to catastrophize. So, I diagnose PTSD. I tend to catastrophize situations. Um, if I'm getting into something that I don't want to get into, I'll be like, oh, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be worse. And it's all in my head. But knowing that I do that, it's interrupting that process and being whether you're nice to yourself or mean to yourself like I am. It's for me, it's quit whining. Um, you're catastrophizing this, you are making this worse than it really is, uh, and just learning how to recognize that. That's disrupting that homeostasis, which the homeostasis, if you're not right in the head, is not being right in the head. So putting a stop to it, recognizing it, and then having processes there to make yourself better. Uh, So physical, mental, and the emotional side. So the emotional side might 
So if it's the gym, it could be that this is your Zen area. This could be where you come and you know, even if you just come out here and you walk in circles for a little bit, maybe not a home gym, but you just go to the gym and like just being at the gym without considering the work you do could be a part of that. Or it could be going to church, or it could be spending time in prayer, spending time in reflection or journaling or writing things down. Um, all of those things though are in the gym because like I keep paper logs on everything that I do when I lift. That's part of that reflection. That's part of the emotional side of being in the gym. And to some that are listening to this, they, they might think like, well, isn't it a little bit wishy-washy? And I would argue that uh, until you've actually done it, tried it, put the actual effort into seeing if it works, that you're not going to know. So try it. And I guarantee you it'll probably end up working for you. Well said. I've got to look up how to spell homeostasis. Homeostasis? <laughs> yeah. But no, it's... Um, I heard a pastor recently say, uh, my pastor, and he he had a quote, and it just, it is, he actually said it about a year ago, but it stuck with me, but what dominates our thoughts determines our direction. And on top of that, I attended the Air Force uh, Association Conference, or the, I guess the Air and Space Force Conference a couple weeks ago, and Chief Toldman and his wife were doing a panel. They were up on stage talking, and they were discussing how the importance, like the best relationship you should have this is one with yourself first, because if you don't have a great relationship with yourself, how can you have a great relationship or the bar, you know, you're setting a curve. You're not going to be able to build an outstanding relationship with uh, like your loved ones. So, I, uh, but to me, strength training helps with that. And I think it uh, ties in what you were talking about. If I could uh, not counterpoint that, but add to that. Yeah, yeah. A relationship is one where both parties come into it with the intent of living happily and making each other better. So to have a positive relationship with yourself does not mean that you have to, you have to accept who you are, where you're at. You have to do that, but you don't have to accept that as forever. So I just want to make sure that that's clear that just because you maybe have emotional damage, physical damage, or, or mental damage of some sort. And I mean that like with the softest hands that I can have, I'm not good with words, but you can't just be like, so if I came into this and I'm like, I'm going to have a good relationship with myself. I have chronic PTSD. So that means I'm just going to have to live with chronic PTSD. That is actually a toxic relationship with yourself. So you have to have that relationship, but you've got to take it a step farther. And you have to come into that relationship with the intent of improving it. Because if you come in with the intent of maintaining the status quo, unless you're Jesus, you just entered the world's worst relationship. Because yeah. we are all flawed and we all need to try to improve ourselves, uh, regardless of the field or the arena.